Hello again, Internet. I'm going to show you the process I use to design and model a naturally pressurized running system like the ones shown in my previous videos on using a vertical parting plane. These are concepts I picked up from watching other videos and from reading John Campbell's excellent but very dense book on the subject. The first principle of a naturally, naturally pressurized running system uh, is that it allows fl the flow of metal is constrained up until it enters the mold cavity. Like everything else, a stream of molten metal accelerates as it falls. So if we have a pouring basin that is one inch deep and we want 10 cubic inches per second to flow out of it, then we can calculate the speed of the falling metal when it leaves the bottom of the basin and at different points as it continues to fall. The equation for free fall velocity is the square root of 2 times the acceleration due to gravity times the distance traveled. And the uh, gravitational uh, acceleration is 386, 386 386 inches per second squared, or 9.8 meters per second squared. So now we can calculate the velocity of the metal stream at the bottom of the basin to be 28 inches per second. Now, the formula for volumetric flow is velocity times cross-sectional area. So rearranging things, we can then create a formula for the diameter of a circular cross-section given the flow and velocity. And the diameter of the stream at the base of the basin is 6 point, uh, 0.677 inches. We can also calculate the velocity and cross-section of the falling stream at any other point along its path. Here we have a diagram of a running system and mold cavity, as well as a spreadsheet to automate the calculations. Starting from the pouring basin, as the stream falls farther and its velocity increases, less cross-sectional area is needed for the same amount of flow to pass through. In the spreadsheet, this is calculated for different points along the length of the sprue. You see here, at a height of 4 inches from the base of the sprue, the speed of the metal is only 28 inches per second, and a sprue with a diameter of 0 0.508 inches is needed if the flow rate is 5.6 cubic inches per second. That flow is calculated from the size of the gate and the critical velocity, which we will get to later. Down lower at a height of 2 inches from the base, the speed of the falling metal is 48 inches per second, and a diameter of only 0.386 inches is needed to convey the same amount of flow. If the sprue was the same diameter all the way down, the stream of metal would not be able to fill it and air would mix in with the falling metal. So to constrain this falling stream and keep air out, the sprue should be designed to follow its natural shape. Since the height of the base of the sprue and the runner are the same or nearly the same, the speed of the metal at both points will be the same. Therefore, the base of the sprue should transition into a runner with the same cross-sectional area. A smaller runner will not be able to convey the designed rate of flow, and a larger runner will not confine the stream, allowing it to cavitate and break apart. 
Now, the second principle of a naturally pressurized running system is that the metal must enter the mold cavity at a critical speed. The critical speed is the highest speed where the metal will flow smoothly and hold together due to its own surface tension. If the speed of the metal going into the mold cavity is higher than this critical speed, the stream of metal may jet into the mold, become turbulent, fold over on itself, break apart, and trap air bubbles. According to the Complete Casting Handbook by John Campbell, for most metals, the critical velocity is around 0.5 meters per second, or 20 inches per second. To be conservative and account for uncertainties, I typically design around 0.4 meters per second, or 15 inches per second. An astute viewer may note that these two principles come into conflict at the point where metal transitions from the runner to the gate. In this design, the speed of the metal in the runner is 62 inches per second, or approximately 1.5 meters per second. This is much higher than the critical speed and would make a mess if the metal were to enter the mold cavity directly. Even if the runner were widened at this point, the momentum of the metal in the runner would cause it to break up into a jet rather than spontaneously slowing down. Therefore, a surge trap is used to capture the initial flow of metal, gradually build up pressure, and then divert the flow in a right angle at a lower speed. There are different forms of surge traps. This is a simple one that works for molds with vertical parting planes and can be seen in some of my other videos. So, to design a running system for a particular mold using this spreadsheet, we must first enter the depth of the runner. This is the distance from the top of the mold, or more, pre more precisely, the surface of the molten metal in the pouring basin, and the top of the runner. In a standard sand mold with a runner set in the drag, this will be the thickness of the cope. In a vertical mold like the one shown in the diagram, the shape of the mold cavity will determine the depth of the runner. In this case, five inches will provide enough room for the small plaque we are designing around. Next, we enter the dimensions of the gate into the mold cavity. If the plaque is five inches wide and a three inch wide gate will keep it away from the filled corners. The gate is an eighth of an inch wide. This is thinner than the 3 16th thick plaque. As a rule, the gate should be thinner than the object being cast. If the, mold, if the volume of the mold cavity can be calculated or estimated, it should also be entered. Once this is done, the dimensions of the sprue can be calculated for different heights, and the dimensions of the runner will be calculated. The spreadsheet also calculated the fill time for the mold cavity. To clarify, this is a theoretical time from when the metal first enters the cavity to when it is full. In practice, there will be additional time to fill the running system first, and the flow rate will decrease some as the level in the mold cavity rises. A lower fill time reduces the chances of the metal freezing before the mold is filled, reduces temperature differences within the mold, and can help with shrinkage issues. In general, the lowest practical fill time is best. This is accomplished by using the largest gate that is practical. With the critical dimensions calculated, we can now begin modeling the running system. In the case of a vertical mold, all the parts can be designed as a single printable part. With a single piece running system, it is best to go backwards from the direction of metal flow, starting with the gate into the mold cavity. Here, we follow the dimensions in the spreadsheet. Make sure to add some draft. Five degrees is good. Uh, we will make it about half an inch long here to make it easy to mold as much as anything else. Once this is done, we can start the runner by extruding the cross section with dimensions defined in the spreadsheet. A trapezoid with equal height and center width gives us the correct area and allows us to add draft. Finally, we extrude the runner cross section in both directions just beyond the gate. Now, we can define a transition from the runner to the sprue by sweeping the runner cross section. Being able to easily put a radius here is one of the advantages of a vertical mold. Once this is done, 
we can define the cross sections of the sprue at different heights. In the spreadsheet, we have calculated the area and square length of the sprue at 2 inches and 4 inches up from the runner. So, we define planes at these heights and sketch similar shaped trapezoids at each one. The dimensions of the trapezoids come from the calculated values in the spreadsheet. Note that I mess up here on the 2-inch cross-section. I'll realize my mistake later and correct it. Once the cross-sections are sketched, the sprue is modeled using a loft operation. You can see that it's close to a simple taper. For a short sprue like this, it probably would have been fine to loft a simple taper shape from the base to a 4-inch height. However, it is easy enough to define one or two intermediate cross-sections and get a more accurate shape. With the runner transition and sprue done, we can make most of the surge trap just by mirroring these two features. Now we can loft to the surge trap to the top of the mold. This is not strictly necessary, but the surge trap does need to be vented and this will help align the running system pattern in the flask. Finally, we model the offset and stepped pouring basin. The the step ensures that the initial splash of metal is kept away from the sprue. The pouring basin should be as large as practical. The larger it is, the easier it will be to pour the metal in and control the liquid level. Generous fillets around the top of the sprue are essential to prevent turbulence as the metal drains from the pouring basin. Finally, there are the details I forgot. Trimming the gate to match the shape of the pattern and a large fillet between the runner and the gate on the side where the metal enters. Uh, small fillets around the rest of the gate will help with molding. Now, looking at the model, the sprue seems wrong. Uh, it is too fat in the middle. A double check of the dimensions shows that I accidentally used the round sprue diameter rather than the square sprue length for the two inch high cross section. Now it looks a lot more like I would expect. Finally, we can print the whole part and after some sanding and painting, it should work well as a prefabricated running system for plaques and other small objects that can be cast in a vertical mold. Uh, if you've made it to the end of this, then, uh, well, thanks for watching the whole thing, and uh, I hope it was useful to you. Uh, I'll have links to uh, both the spreadsheet that I use, which has inch and metric versions for the calculations, uh, and a rough script of the whole video uh, if uh, my voice is not uh, as clear as it could be. Anyway, um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, uh, if you'd like me to try and uh, do a conventional mold, cope and drag version of this. Uh, a lot of the principles are the same. And uh, anyway, uh, be safe and uh, good luck all.